Today's topic of discussion is creating employment for the future. We all know about unemployment and the effect that that has on the world. So how do we go about reshaping the current system to create a freer and fairer society? Philip, I do want to bring it back to measures a little bit later on because it's obviously really important, but I feel there's more to go with this. And Benita, I just want you to, to sort of come back with your thoughts about what Philip's just been saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely agree that uh, at the heart of a business purpose, traditional businesses are about profit. And to me, therein lies the problem. You agree with that? I agree, I agree with you that uh, the currently a, 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 the purpose of a business, of a traditional business... Yeah is to create profit. And you agree there's a problem and with I that? And I agree there's a problem with that. Absolutely agree. However, <laughs> what needs to happen is that we have these new kinds of structures where businesses have a legal requirement to deliver on profit, on environmental value and social value. And that's why the, the whole notion of these models, these responsible business models, such as the B Corp, and there are other models as well, where those are fundamentally embedded in the business structure, in the legal structure of, the, of that business. So you see now, you know, many of these social enterprises, social businesses, but also other businesses that are starting to look at this whole question of responsibility to society and to the planet. So I agree that traditionally that's where we've been and that has been the purpose of a business. However, that needs to shift and already is shifting. And we see that with the rise of, for example, the B Corp movement. And we start to look at the numbers around B Corps, the increasing numbers of B Corps, but also the numbers of businesses that are having to start to look at what they are offering society. And they are being called out, they are being named and shamed. We see endless cases where workers' rights, workers are being exploited, and that is being called out. And we're going to see, I believe, increasing numbers of, of legal action in this respect, and also shifts in different new, new, new structures, new legal structures. Just to be clear, so, so you're agreeing that profit by itself um, is the wrong measure, but what you're saying, I think, is where we, we're not completely aligned, is you think you can have two purposes. Yeah. You think you can have a purpose of of doing good, i.e. looking after the environment, looking after nature and people, and also looking after profit. You're saying that's... But the trouble is the two are conflicting. Let's think about this carefully. So you've got purpose one, which is to protect everybody and to protect the environment, but you've got purpose two, which is to protect one group within that coalition. How can you have two completely different misaligned views. You can't do both. You can't look after everybody and nature as one purpose and then have another purpose, which is only... Can you not see there's a conflict? The reason I don't believe there's a conflict is I would say I would argue that as a mother, every day I'm embedding those three principles of people, planet and profit into my household because I need to make money and run a household that is we are able to be financially sustainable I also need to be able to make a positive contribution to my look after my children and make sure that they have their needs are met in terms of the love that they need to receive and so on. And then thirdly, to respect the community and the environment in which we live. And I don't see that I have to make a decision that I'm only going to fulfill one of those obligations. And in the same way, a business also is able to fulfill all three. Why are they at odds? In life, we don't only decide that we are going to do one thing or be one thing or have one kind of obligation. We make those choices every single day. And we can be uh, several different uh, things to several different people all the time. We do this. We do this on a daily basis. It's, a, it's well, an interesting well, it's, argument. It's so. interesting. But I hear what you're saying, but but when you're running a household, you're not running a PNL. <laughs> it's not running a business. I, I've I've run many businesses. Um, a household is you're meeting the needs of the kids, your husband, your children, um, and that's your purpose. You want everybody, and and of course you want to care for the planet at the same time. Uh, and that is not the same as you having a PL. That what would be the equivalent is I'm going to have a PL. So I'm going to therefore say um, my family is going to make a million pounds this year, um, and, and I'm going to um, 
use that to, 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 to buy umpteen houses and to whatever, whatever it is to, 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 to build a swimming pool, all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas um, what we should be doing, you make different decisions. It, the, the best way of me explaining is the groups can't be the same. If you've got three different groups or five different groups and you're thinking about all of them, you can't just think about one. It's just, it's fundamentally different. You can't think about both. Um, I, I tried to do it in business. I've actually tried this. This is something I've, I've worked up in personal experience. Um, you can't do it because the business world is about the shareholders and therefore if you don't, uh, interestingly, I, I was at a meeting again last night, which comes to mind, and, and they wanted to be environmentally friendly. This is a, a CLA, which is a, um, an organization that invests funds for, for, for uh, largely uh, religious organizations in, a, in an ethical and moral way. So they decided, if, in, I think in 2019, um, to, in, to, to move out of fossil fuels. Any company involved in fossil fuels they were going to move out of to be to look after the environment. What happens? Well, now with the wars, energy prices are escal are massively increasing. Mm. So, so their their investors said, "One minute, it was all very well, but now my return, I missed the opportunity to make a lot of money because energy prices have, have abusively increased, and therefore I'm making money." The problem there, and, and therefore he doesn't know where to go because, because you've got two different purposes. His, if your purpose is to look after the environment, it doesn't matter what it does to the share price because his purpose is to look after the environment. Mm -hmm. But because the people who are the shareholders only really care about their share price, they didn't really buy into his purpose of the environment. It was just trying to make more money. But when you make more money, by actually buying the energy companies. <laughs> they said, well, I've never bought the energy companies. It's just, it's exactly the same. You can't have two misaligned purposes. You can only have one purpose. And I would absolutely disagree with that. And the reason I disagree with that is because, as I say, every single day we're making those choices and we don't only deliver on one aspect of, of life or indeed in business. We certainly see, for example, that a business that looks after its employees will have greater staff retention and is going to therefore be spending um, you know, much less money on recruitment, for example. Those kinds of businesses that are good places to work, where conditions are fair, where wages are fair, where conditions that people are working in places that people want to come and work are going to be those kinds of businesses that people want they return to. And so you have higher staff retention, for example, those companies that are kinder, nicer places to work. Again, young people, we've got to factor young people into this equation because we know that unemployment affects young people hugely. One in four young people globally are unemployed. And young people particularly are making decisions about where they want to work based on ethics, based on values. And those companies that care for the planet, that care for people in it, have a much, much higher ability to attract and retain talent and the kind of talent that we need for the future. So I guess my argument, Philip, would be that the businesses that are solely going to focus on profit ultimately will be out of business because they're not going to have the staff, they're not going to attract the kind of staff, the kind of talent, the kind of skills that are needed for the future. Sort of skills that we need for the future are collaborative skills, are creative skills, are problem solving skills, but they're also compassion. Those are the kinds of skills that we need for the future. We know, for example, that healthcare and jobs in healthcare, this is a huge burgeoning sector. You look at mental health issues that are coming to the fore. Compassionate skills are absolutely front and center. And if, if companies are not compassionate in their approach and the kinds of cultures that they create, they're not going to attract the kind of talent that is going to take them into the future so that they can survive into the future. So why do you need to make a profit? Because you need to be financially sustainable. Sustainability at its core simply means the ability to continue. Why the ability need, to continue financially. Why do you need profit to continue? Because companies need to be able to, they need to pay their bills, they need to pay their staff, they profit, need to be able cost. to. Ah, oh, but that's about what we do with, we're talking about then what we do with our profit. So for example, companies that reinvest their profit 
in the planet, in the people that work for them. That's about what we do with our profit. Why do you I'm not questioning that companies need to be fiscally responsible and financially sustainable. They need to do that in order to, to survive. They absolutely need yeah. to do that in order to survive. However, it's, there is a question about how you make your profit and what you do with your profit once you've made that profit. But why do you need a profit? What I'm saying to you, it, the purpose, you've got to be very clear, we need to look after people. What is our end game? Profit, what is it? I mean, I'm an accountant, it's, it's fictitious. You can, I mean, unfortunately, it's not a number. That, and you can create the number you want. We're talking about meaningful work. Creative accounting is what, what and, and you can mess around with your, your, your creditors, with your accounting, with your, with your intangible assets. It's a meaningless number. It's just a meaningless number that's manipulatable. Um, and and it, it's a distraction. It just means that you're not focused on what you're really trying to mean. I, I think we agree we need to look, about peop look after people and nature. So let's measure it. Let's, measure, let's simply measure the needs and meet them. You, this, this indirect thing called profit, which is impossible to measure, which is, isn't cash, which is, leads to all kinds of totally inappropriate behavior where you start to manipulate the numbers, you start to um, advertise, for example, which um, is trying to create desires for people to buy things that they don't need. The incentive is completely and totally wrong. So why are you creating an incentive um, which is confusing people? Just cut it out. I'm asking, why do you need it? Why do you need the profit? So it's been a really, really interesting discussion. Yes, we, of course, have had the overall topic of employment, but it's been great because we've actually had quite a few other things and elements coming in, which has been really good. So thank you so much for joining us for this yes. discussion. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Do remember to hit the subscribe button, very important, and hopefully we'll get those views up next time we see you as well. Until that next time, take care. Goodbye.